Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. How are you this evening? It's going to be a good one. You might want to hit the like and the share and tell everybody to come on in. Have a seat. Okay. So, happy Sunday, everybody. Hopefully, everybody has had a fantastic weekend, and you're ready to get started with your week. Let's make a cocktail, and let's get the party started, okay? So, I'm going to do a frozen gremlin, okay? A frozen gremlin. Shout out to everybody who lives in the great city of... Philadelphia, you know exactly what a gremlin is, okay? A gremlin is made with, um, it's a combination of grape and lemonade. I don't have grape. I got berry, okay? So it's just going to be berry, a berry, a frozen berry gremlin. That's what it's going to be tonight, all right? So I put my berry Kool-Aid, that's all I got. I'm sorry, I don't have no other kind of Kool-Aid. That's all I got, okay? And I'm dousing it with a little bit of simple syrup. And I got a little fresh squeezed lemon juice I'm gonna throw in here, okay? And this will give us, you know, it's berry, berry ish. It's supposed to be great, but you know what? Hey, to compensate, for please tear here. Why I gotta tear over here? Oh. Oh. Okay, so to compensate for the lack of grape, uh, because I was not gonna go back to the store to get grape Kool-Aid specifically for this, I have some um white grape vodka. Okay. This is white grape Ciroc. So we do a, a splash of that. Okay. And then I wanted to put a little bit of uh, whiskey in here, so I have a little a little bit of uh, white label right in there. A little whiskey, a little whatever you got, but like that nice caramely flavor. You know what I mean? All right. And this is going to end up looking. Now it would be nice if I had great Kool Aid, but I don't. So we're gonna have to use what we have. Isn't that, isn't that what uh, isn't that what Moses had to do? And what the Lord told him: Use what you have. Ain't today Sunday? Huh? Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's blow this up. understand how happy a frozen drink makes me like I get very very excited with frozen beverages okay like this is my judge okay it's supposed to be great but you know what blue will work too you got to use what you have okay blue will work okay it's supposed to be great but bow your head and say grace Huh? And let's go. My God. My goodness. Okay, this is good. This here. That white grape Ciroc floating through here. Okay, come on, Quap and get. We're cooking quite a few things tonight. So this we're gonna be in for a long one. We're cooking out of stories from our grandmother's kitchen. Uh, for those of you, how's 35% tonight? For those of you who don't have a copy, 
of any one of my cookbooks. I'm going to give you a live code. The code is only good while we are live right now in this space, you see. Once I get off of here, the code ain't going to be no good anymore. So if you want to say some money, let's say uh, I'm feeling good, 40%. Let's do 40%. The code tonight is grape, G-R-A-P-E. The code is grape. I'm feeling good. 40% of all cookbooks, including the new cookbook, you can save right now. Feeling good. No, it's going to be great. Uh-oh. Brain freeze. Okay, 40%. Go to shopdariuscooks.com only while we're live, and you can save uh, 40% tonight on any cookbook. Okay? Do it now. Or else, by the time we're done, it's going to be over. Okay, over. Hopefully, everybody is enjoying... Um, you're enjoying your cookbook, okay? I should probably put an apron on. I don't want to mess up my, my lovely shirt. Let me put a... Since we're baking this evening, okay? Let's do that. Since we're baking this evening. Okay. And by the way, I'll have you know, I also picked up I didn't even know they made Bacardi Black and Jim Bean Peach, okay? Bacardi Black and Jim Bean. I went to the liquor store, so it's on and popping, son. Okay, it is on. <laughs> what did Oprah say? Oprah said, whenever I make black eyed peas and cornbread for Stedman, it is on. Okay, whenever I make black eyed peas with for Stedman and cornbread, it is it is on. These aprons will be available soon at shopdariuscooks.com. This is the banana pudding apron. We have banana pudding, red velvet, peach cobbler, key lime pie, and German chocolate cake. Okay, so my my new apron line is coming soon. Okay, now peach cobbler pound cake. We uh, I sell these. Okay, at carolinapoundcake.com. Uh, Thanksgiving 2020 is another code you can use if you want to pick up a pound cake. We got four new flavors that are out today. Okay, uh, rum cake, sh strawberry moscato, pineapple Hennessy, and crown apple caramel. Okay. Uh, the new cookbook is not really a new book. It is my holiday book, 101 Recipes for Your Holiday Table, that is shipping next week. Okay. Okay, so that was uh, cream cheese, one pack, eight ounces of cream cheese. And then to that, you want to add two sticks of butter. Your butter can be softened, or it needs to be soft, but your butter can be room to salted. Your butter could be salted or it can be unsalted. It's completely up to you. Um, I don't find that there is much of a difference between salted and unsalted, but hey, that is just my preference. Knock yourself out, all right? Um, and then we're going to add in our sugar. All right, so this is one. This is two. And this is three cups of sugar. I love um, this recipe because it really is quite forgiving. You know, you know how sometimes you can be like, I don't really know how to bake, and I'm gonna mess something up. This is so simple and so easy that you really cannot uh, mess this up. Okay. Um, 
It's so easy. Now this recipe for this particular pound cake is already available. Yeah, it's available at uh, DariusCooks.tv. I have to think. I had to think. It's available. That thing is good. All that's delicious. It's available by going to DariusCooks.tv and just use the search option. Brain freeze! Oh my god! Okay, use the search option on the website for um, for the pound cake. Okay, you just want to blend this until. I had a cute spatula. You want to blend this until it's nice, light, and pale in color. If you can see, I know it's kind of hard to see on these cameras, but this is like super white, super fluffy. Like, this is what you want. You're trying to incorporate your air inside. If I wasn't live, I would let this go. You know, another, you know, three, I would walk away, let it go for like another three minutes. But since I'm live, we ain't got that kind of time, okay? So with the motor running, total of five eggs are gonna go in, room temperature eggs, okay? One at a time, so there's one. And this you can do. I know people say, but Darius, I'm not a baker. Trust me, if you follow the recipe, all we did was put butter and cream cheese and sugar into a blender, I mean into a mixer, and now I'm putting in, I'm putting in eggs, five eggs, one at a time. It's that simple, okay? If you want a copy of the cookbooks, the website is uh, shopdariuscooks.com. Use the code, put it in the comments, me, please. Use the code GRAPE to save 40% tonight, all right? This is our, how many eggs is there? Three, four, and then five. See, real simple. Five eggs go in, this you can do with no problem. All right, let the eggs incorporate. Now let's add some flavor. So the other, um, this week, early this week, I was in, um, I was in Mexico, and I picked up some Mexican vanilla. If you don't have Mexican vanilla, don't worry, okay? Regular vanilla does you just fine. But there's something about this Mexican vanilla that is just outstanding, okay? So we're going to add that uh, right in here, okay? Then let's do this. Let me put a little scotch of, I'm going to put a little scotch of cinnamon in the batter because I can do that. So a little scotch of cinnamon. I don't know how much a scotch, what is a scotch? How much is a scotch? Put your scotch. <laughs> I don't know. But put you a scotch of cinnamon in. Okay, in go, <laughs> in go the salt. And in goes the baking powder. Uh oh, I can't even get the spoon in there. In goes the baking powder. And then uh, let's add in the flour 
right in there, okay? So this is one, this is two, and you should hear the mixer start to work a little overtime at a certain point. You should hear that, like, hey, what's going on? That's what we want to have happen. See, it's starting to get real thick on you. That's what you want because we're going to add in a cup of either half and half or a cup of heavy cream right into here, right? That's the secret to a moist pound cake, okay? Put in your heavy cream or your half and half. That's gonna be your secret to a really, really, really amazing pound cake, okay? Now, who says you can't make pound cake, okay? That's it, that's all that we need. Let me get rid of all of this stuff so we can keep moving. Okay? And there are pound cake recipes. First of all, there's vegan pound cake recipes in um, Vegan But With Soul, right? There's also pound cake recipes in uh, 101 recipes for your holiday table. And you also have pound cake recipes in stories from my grandmother's kitchen, you see. Pound cakes are, are everywhere, okay? Look at how beautiful our pound cake batter is. See that? It's gorgeous. And honestly, it doesn't take long to hook this up, okay? All right, now let's talk about the filling a little bit. If you happen to have access to fresh peaches, use fresh peaches. If you don't have fresh and you don't have frozen, canned will work, okay? So I have sliced peaches that are already sliced. And here's what I'm going to do. I am draining out the liquid. I don't want that much liquid in here. And sometimes the peaches can be a little on the thick side. If you find that to be true, you can just come in here and slice them in half that way. I ain't gonna worry about it. But if it's a problem for you, then you might wanna take care of that, okay? For me, it's not really a big deal, okay? Mm -mm. Okay, that was cinnamon. That was uh, lemon juice, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of whiskey since we in here or Hennessy or whatever you got, huh? <laughs> whatever you got. And a little scotch of uh, brown sugar. I don't know how much a scotch is, but if you want the full recipe, you know where to go. The full recipe is at, um, I just, I make this so much, I make it so much, I don't need to measure. I can look at it and tell what's right, what's not right, you know. It's just one of those things. But the recipe is on the website, DariusCooks.tv, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. Okay, this is one of my favorite parts because the peaches soak up this cinnamon, and you can put nutmeg if you want to here. I, I should put some in here, but I'm not. This will soak up 
um, some of the, uh, the the liquor and the cinnamon and the brown sugar. Mm, mm, mm. I'm telling you, it's so. Mm. If you like peach cobbler, this is what you need, okay? All right, let me get a uh, pan, a cake pan. Let me see what I got. All right, I got me a little cake pan, and I'm going to spray my pan real good with a kitchen spray or I guess a baking spray. You know, grandma, she didn't have, she, grandma would use this, okay? Grandma would take two hours with her fingers and some butter, all right? And she would sit here for two hours and put the butter on every crease of the pan. I really don't have two hours to spare. <laughs> I, I don't have it, okay? Nor do you, we gotta be at work tomorrow. Okay, so we're gonna put just some peaches on the bottom. And you could do this a bunch of different ways. You can put the peaches on the bottom or the top, doesn't matter. Which in, it's all reversed. So I'm putting them on the bottom, which they will become the top. Or you can put them on the top and they will become the bottom. You can arrange these as pretty as you wanna arrange them. I don't care. I'm not arranging mine pretty, okay? But if you want to, you you put them in, you make it nice and good. I know I got time for that, okay? All right. Now, let's, we're going to dollop on our cake batter. And you kind of want to make sure that you get all the nooks and crannies. You know what I mean? That's kind of important. All right. Now I'm using a mini pan because I just want to show you how it goes. But this is a small one. This is not what we use in Carolina pound cakes, which is why I said my house. Okay. Make sure you do that. Okay. Do that because you want to tap out your excess. Okay. And take it from me. When you bake this, put this on a baking sheet. Sometimes these cakes, they have a mind of their own. And sometimes, okay, sometimes they have a mind of their own. And you'll be cleaning your oven out for the next three weeks, okay? So this goes in. We're going to let this bake, and we'll see you in a moment, Tito. Okay? peach cobbler pound cake. If you need a pound cake delivered, my company, Carolina Pound Cakes, will deliver pound cake. We have tw uh, 12 flavors. Let me see if I can remember them all. Cookies and cream, red velvet, peach cobbler, German chocolate, vanilla cream cheese, 7-Up cream cheese, red velvet, banana pudding, and then the four new flavors, which are uh, crown apple caramel, rum cake, strawberry moscato, and crown apple caramel. I'm sure I missed one somewhere in there, but that's fine, okay? Now, let's cook while our stuff is in the oven. Turn with me to page. We got a lot of pages tonight, Doc. We got a lot of pages tonight. Turn with me to page, let me see here. Here we go, page 70. This ought to be a page that y'all have got in here over and over again. Okay, page 70, we're gonna make my grandmama's braised collard greens, okay? Let's go. I picked up some collard greens. They done seen better days. I probably only need a, I think a bunch is all I need. They done started to oxidize a little bit. I bought them yesterday. 
So we got to hurry up and use them today. Now, uh, I don't know how you clean your collard greens, but I'm going to show you real fast what, what I do, okay? Uh, this is what most people do. Most people, okay, they take the collard green and they pick the collard green off of the stem, the rib, okay? Like this, okay? And they take this and throw this away. That's what my grandmother used to do. When she died, so did that technique. Okay? I take the collard greens, <laughs> I roll them up, and I thinly slice fresh collard greens down to about this much. If you want to pick these off, pick them off. It's up to you. I don't care how you do it. And now I take the collard greens with the stem attached to them and I cut them up. Now, I either do that or I will buy and don't shame on my game. Okay? I will buy the collard greens already picked and cleaned ready to go. I have picked enough collard greens in my childhood years that I am basically traumatized from picking collard greens and picking green beans, okay? So anything I could do to avoid the task, I will. Now, the reason most people pick out uh, the stem on the collard green is because the stem is tough, right? But what I say is if you cook the stem down, Guess what? The stems won't be tough. And didn't you pay for the stems? Huh? Didn't you pay for the stems? Listen, I don't know about you, but money don't grow on trees. Okay? Money do not grow on trees. So anyway, this is the way I do my uh, collard greens and Whichever way you enjoy doing them, you can do them. Because as our auntie Tab say, that's your business. Okay? So I'm putting the collard greens like this. And I only guess I only needed one bunch. They huge, right? That's the good thing about being in the South. We still have access to some really... Um, some really great produce uh, this time of year. Corn is still plentiful. As you can see, collard, fresh collard greens are still plentiful. Okay. Brussels are real nice. So we still, we're lucky. Spinach. All right. Okay, warm water. Uh, these need to be washed really, really well, okay? I have seen it all. I have seen people put dishwashing liquid in their collard greens to wash them. Uh, I've seen people use baking soda to wash them. Which, whichever way you want to do them, listen. Let your heart be content, okay? Let your heart be content, okay? Before y'all got here, I went ahead and started boiling off my meat, okay? If you were on the live yesterday, oh, by the way, I'm on page... 70 stories from my grandmother's kitchen. And I also have a vegan collard green in here too. 
Let me see. I got to find it so I can tell you the page number. The vegan collard greens are on page... Hold on. They in here. The vegan collard greens are on page 106. Look at that. Okay? On page 106. So you have page 70 in stories or you got page 106 in vegan. Either way, both books are available by going to shop Darius Cooks. Use the code GRAPE at checkout to save how much? Forty percent. Okay. What I was trying to tell you was, oh, let me run this again. Hold on. Is while you wasn't looking, and while y'all wasn't here, I'ma cook these in the instant pot, right? But let me show you what I did. Okay, if you were on with me yesterday, I told you that I had, um, what did I have? Turkey. <laughs> but I had a turkey thigh, okay? So I started cooking down and pressuring down my turkey thigh, okay? This is a smoked turkey thigh. I had never seen a smoked turkey thigh before in my life. I said a smoked turkey thigh? Oh, sign me up, okay? And I also threw, ooh, ooh, ooh. I threw a couple of turkey wings in here as well, okay? So we got turkey thigh meat I never had. I never had a smoked turkey. Oh, mmm. Tastes like everything else. Tastes like smoked turkey wing, smoked turkey leg. It tastes like smoked turkey. But I had no, it's meatier. Okay. Oh well. Oh well. So. Well, I'm trying to find I started putting the meat and cooking the meat down, okay? I started. And I'm going to add in my cleaned collard greens, okay? I'm going to pour out a little bit of this liquid because I want some liquid, but the collard greens are gonna make their own. You see what I'm saying? They're gonna make a lot. So let me pour out some, that way it don't be that much, you know, swimming around. If you like them real juicy, keep it that way, okay? Don't let me stop you. If you like them real, real juicy. Some people like them juicy. I ain't gonna lie, I like them juicy too. But this be a lot of juice. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of the water. And this water got flavor in it because it's got that smoked turkey broth we done started with. Anyway, I'm gonna put these back on the Instant Pot. And these ain't gonna take about 25, 25 minutes. See, we used to cook collard greens Grandma used to start collard greens on Saturday night. And we wouldn't eat collard greens until Sunday after church. I don't know why collard greens got to cook 24 hours. Okay? However, for the Instant Pot, 25 minutes. Amen? Okay. I'm going to put the lid back on. And uh, plug this back up. Okay? Please hold the line. I know I it's gonna make more pot liquor. I know. I know it's gonna make more pot liquor. Okay, hold on, y'all. I had to unplug it. 
Okay. We put it back on. We pressure it. Okay. Let that do its thing. Okay, so we have the collard greens. And what I like to do, and I get so many questions. They go, Darius, why do you, why do you, um, why do you season the collard greens at the end? Because they got all the flavor. You see, they got all the flavor. Y'all like macaroni and cheese? I said we should make a little pan of it. What y'all think? Huh? I said we should make a little pan of macaroni and cheese. I, I know. Because macaroni and cheese go real good with pound cake and um, collard greens. Okay, but before we do that, let's work on another recipe. Okay, I need my bowl. I'm, so I'm putting my peaches in a smaller bowl, and I'm going to rinse this bowl out. Okay, we're going to use that. Let's turn to page, and I put a bookmark on page 70, okay? By the way, we're cooking out of stories from our grandmother's kitchen. If you don't have a copy of that book, you can go to shopdariuscooks.com. Use the code... Um, Grape, G-R-A-P-E, at checkout, and you can save you some money, okay? We're on page 157, my grandmama's chicken meatloaf, huh? Y'all like meatloaf? <laughs> you hungry? Let's make a snack, okay? My grandmama's meatloaf is delicious. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we do it, okay, I'm going to show you how we do it, okay, I got a little piece of bell pepper, listen, we got collard greens, smoked turkey, we got peach cobbler pound, okay, let me look at it, let me look at it real good, yeah, God. We got peach cobbler pound cake. We got collard greens smoked turkey. We got a little piece of meatloaf. We got our Kool-Aid. Hold on, I'm sweating. Oh yes, it's hot in here. <laughs> it could be the, it could be the, the vodka. I did not know that that um that grape was gonna be that good. I did not know that. Okay, that is delicious. This this grape um this here this uh white grape Ciroc. Oh oh oh! I had a headache before I started. Not anymore. Okay. All right. I'm a I'm a dice up small dice some uh, bell pepper. And you can feel free to use any combination, okay, of vegetables you like. Normally, I put this in the food processor. That's what I normally do, okay? I put it in the food processor because um, it'll give me little small pieces and it's quicker. But I don't feel like getting it out, so I'm just gonna thug it out real fast, like this. But whatever you do, make sure your vegetables are pretty finely chopped, okay? Okay, and the book says, uh, what the book say? 
the book say, I know it say onion, onion, bell pepper, celery. I don't have no celery, so I'm going to use extra onion. I don't have no celery, I'm going to use what I have, okay? And celery ain't it, okay? I do have garlic, though. <laughs> what I do with it? Oh, here you go. I knew I had garlic. I just didn't know where I put it. Okay. So onion, bell pepper, celery, and garlic. I don't have any um, celery. Use use as much garlic as you like. Okay. I typically like, y'all hold on one second. I typically like uh, a lot of garlic in mine, personally. So I'm just going to mince up fresh garlic. And I always tell you, please, 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 please do not use that garlic in a jar, okay? Use fresh garlic like this, okay? It's so much better tasting. That garlic in the jar with that water and stuff, I don't like that, and I don't know why y'all be eating that. Stop. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. Now I have to grab some chicken. This is ground chicken breast. Okay. But I'm going to put in here. There's one pack. One pound, and then this is the second pound. I know the book does call for two pounds. That much I do know. So, um, and you can mix this. Feel free if you want to do turkey. Um, turkey could work if you wanted to do um, what Italian sausage. Uh, Italian sausage could work. Listen, whatever your heart feels, you should do. Okay, we need salt, pepper. Oh, all the basics. Okay. So that was a little dry fennel. There's a little onion powder. There's a little garlic powder. We haven't put any salt in here at all. And you know, chicken needs salt. Chicken definitely needs salt. So let's throw some salt in here. Enough salt, please. And I think I got a pinch of red pepper flake. That's what I like in mine. Oh, let's do some complete seasoning and then a little pinch of red pepper flake. Here we go. Okay, for a little kick and for a little more flavor. And I think the book says add in some, um, I think the book says you need to add in some uh, smoked paprika. Be honest with you, I'm gonna leave it out. Now, I don't put eggs in my meatloaf. My grandma didn't put eggs in hers. What we normally do is a little Italian trick, right? Where you soak bread in milk and then you squeeze out the excess bread in the milk and then you throw that in here and that's what keeps it super moist, right? So I'm also gonna throw in a few of these soda crackers because they taste good, okay? And the secret to a moist meatloaf, olive oil, please. This is ground chicken. It does not have a lot of fat in the ground chicken. So, of course, it's going to um, dry out on you real easily, which is why the addition, the addition to this with the, um, my drink working on me. What I'm trying to say, the, addi <laughs> the addition of the, the bread, you get the idea, child. <laughs> You get the idea. 
Listen, okay? My water boiling for my pasta. Let's, <laughs> let's hook the pasta up. You know what I'm trying to say. The vodka is working, okay? I'm using corkscrews for this. Use whatever you got, okay? We add some salt, a lot of salt to the water, and then in go the pasta. Okay, I'm only gonna do a small, a little small container, okay? <coughs> now hold on, let me make sure my stuff is, oh, oh, okay, it's pressuring, it's pressuring. Okay, let's mix this together. This is the seasonings, the onion, the garlic, the bell pepper, everything, right? The crackers, all of that. If you had the bread, I just don't have no bread. But if you had the bread, put the bread in there, okay? Put the bread in there. It'll be delicious, all right? Okay, put down something. Now, this is a seal pack, but you can put the seal pack down, or you can put um, parchment paper, okay? And then all we do now is very simply we form this into a meatloaf. But I'm going to form it into sort of a thin meatloaf because I want it to cook quickly, okay? So we form it into football-shaped thin kind of meatloaf. And then this goes off into the oven. Are y'all team gravy or team ketchup? I'll be honest. This is the ketchup for me. I'll be honest. Okay? It is the ketchup for me. Okay? I mean, you know what? I don't mind a good gravy every once in a while. But I'm going to be honest with you. I love ketchup and brown sugar. Oh, by the way, the meatloaf is on page 157 in Stories from My Grandmother's Kitchen. Use the code GRAPE tonight to save 30 per, or 40%, 40% at uh, shopdariuscooks.com. Has anybody ever made this with, with ketchup and gravy? Mmm! Barbecue sauce does sound good. Mm-hmm. This was supposed to be a frozen gremlin in Philadelphia. At the Ishka Bibbles, a gremlin is grape and lemonade. But I ain't had no grape Kool-Aid, so I use berry blue. It'll work. Okay. My pasta. Always, always, always oversalt the water. Brain freeze. Undersalt, I mean, oversalt the water and overcook the pasta, always, okay? If you cook the pasta to completion, now, we're gonna add the sauce right now, and you put the sauce and then bake the pot, at the end of the day, it's gonna be too mushy. Everybody got time for that? Turn with me. Okay, so we done left page 157, and now we're gonna roll over to page, come on, come on, 109. Okay, page 109. This is the ultimate mac and cheese. All right, let's do it. 
What y'all think? Y'all think we should do it? I'm out of salt. Hold on. Not anymore. Okay, come on. Let's make the cheese, the cheese sauce uh, for the pasta. Which y'all have a hard time with that too. I see it. Butter goes in. By the way, this recipe I know is in the cookbook, which you can get by going to shopdariuscooks.com. Use the code, um, use the code great at checkout to save 40%. And this recipe is also knee deep at dariuscooks.tv. It's on the website, it's on the YouTube channel. Like this recipe is pretty much everywhere. Okay, so if you're looking, if you're looking for it, I mean, you can follow along with me now. But if not, get it out the book. Okay, okay. So the butter is melting, and I'm gonna add the flour and stir the flour in. I'm going for a light skin roux. Okay, light skin roux. That's what I'm going for. I don't want a dark skin roux. I want a light skin. We're making macaroni and cheese, not gumbo. Okay. Proper utensils. We need a whisk, a smaller whisk. Hold on, y'all. Let me grab one. It's in the dishwasher. I'm whisking. I'm whisking my flour and butter together. To create what we call a blonde roux, B L O N D E, blonde roux, R O U X. Okay, that's going to be the thickening agent for our mac and cheese. Okay, just it only takes a few moments. Then I'm going to add in my half and half. Okay, and then let that come to a bit of a boil. Let's talk cheese. Okay, let's talk cheese. Cheese, cheese, cheese. You can use whatever cheese you like to use, okay? Um, I'm not a stickler. When it comes for to certain cheeses, whatever your heart desires, go for it, okay? That meatloaf in that oven smells good. Let me check out our cake. Hold on. Let's see what's going on. Ooh, yes. Cake is cooking. All right. This is a four cheddar blend. I mean, a four cheese. Monterey Jack, Asadero, queso, I mean uh, cheddar, <laughs> and uh, quesadilla cheese, okay? I'm just using whatever was on sale, whatever I saw in the supermarket, okay? And then, because some people be like, you know who these people are. Oh, you have to grate your own cheese, and if I'm going to make macaroni and cheese, I'm going to grate it. It's got to be great. Honey, use whatever you like, okay? Smoked Gouda is the bomb in macaroni and cheese, okay? They don't sell, they don't sell um, smoked Gouda already shredded, so you got to do a little work, okay? So you could even do um, the food processor for this or just run it through this little ghetto um, grater, box grater that I have, okay? Little simple situation. Okay. All right. Smoked Gouda. So I got smoked Gouda, cheddar, asadero, quesadilla cheese. Um, I also have some Irish white cheddar. Okay. You know, them Irish people know how to hook the cheese up. 
They don't have to, I don't know what kind of cows they got in Ireland. But them Ireland people, but they, they make the best cheese and the best butter, don't they? You can keep that, you can keep that, um, that, uh, rabbit stew and all that. I don't want that. Okay. <laughs> all that rabbit stew, you keep all that. Okay. Let's check out our sauce. Oh, yeah. It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. What's this? This smell good? Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. All right. This is more cheddar cheese. I'm going to show you what I do. This is small. Small little thing of mac and cheese. Okay. All right. Right into our pasta bowl. Let's work. In here, we have our pasta. I'm going to add a cup of sour cream. Okay? Sour cream keeps it nice and moist. Gives it that little bit of zip that is fantastic, okay? Now look, this is our cheese, I mean our, the base of our sauce. This is a bechamel. We haven't even seasoned it, okay? I'm going to throw it right into, we get that thickness, I'm going to throw it right into here, okay? I know, normally I would season the sauce and put the seasoned sauce in here, but I'm not doing it this time. Okay, got a little bit of salt. A little bit of fresh cracked pepper. What'd the book say? What'd the book say, garlic powder? Okay. I know the book says a little bit of onion powder. Oh, that's not onion powder. This is. All right. And definitely, let me grab some uh, paprika. So definitely some smoked paprika, okay? Okay, let's stir that together. Now our sauce is seasoned. No cheese. Oh, it smells so good. Like right in here. Oh my God. Okay, now here's our cheese. So we're going to throw all this cheese in, except for a little bit that we'll save and put on top. Now I'm saved, but they say if you, if you do it right, that sound like something. I don't know what that sound like. Okay, because living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Huh? Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. What'd he do? Freed me forever. Huh? One day. <laughs> He's coming back. Okay. And it's going to be what? Glorious day. Okay. Freed me forever, didn't he? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know about that. Okay, the rest of the cheese right on top, okay? See, rest of the cheese right on top, and then right into the oven. Let me go, <laughs> let me go camera to camera so y'all can see, okay? So this is the ultimate mac and cheese. The sour cream is key, okay? Your sour cream is key, okay? This goes right into the oven. 
And the only other thing we need to worry about real fast before I make the sweet potatoes. Huh? Is I need to worry about my um, situation with the uh, meatloaf. <clears throat> Oh, and you know what? Let me just say this, because sometimes I don't say this. Um, Velveeta. Let's talk Velveeta, okay? Let's talk Velveeta. I'm sorry, but I like a little bit of Velveeta mixed into my macaroni and cheese, okay? I just forgot to pick up the Velveeta. I know I just invalidated myself, okay, as an amazing cook, but I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't mind the Velveeta, huh? Y'all like it too, huh? Okay, good. I thought it was just me at first. I actually like, um, I actually like the Velveeta. I'm sorry, I do. I don't care if you don't. I don't even care. I'm going to throw a little chili powder into my, just a touch. That was a touch of chili powder that I threw right into my ketchup situation. Now, remember I told you we're making chicken. It don't take that long to cook this chicken. Okay? It don't take that long. So let me show you what we had so far. Because it, it really do not take that long when the oven is hot. So halfway through... And this thing is sizzling, woo wee! Okay. Halfway through the cooking. Can you see this? Huh? Can you hear it? Okay, halfway through. We're gonna pour over the ketchup and the brown sugar. Okay, put this back in the oven. Let it just fall all over the top of it. You know what else is good with this? Tequila and lime. Yes, tequila and lime in this is fantastic. All right, now the last time we were here, I wanted to make those sweet potatoes for you, but I couldn't. Because what had happened was the sweet potatoes, um, they weren't ready. The devil stay busy. He do. And I said, dog it, man. I really wanted to make those sweet potatoes for you. And the sweet potatoes are so good. They're also, turn with me to page 111. The next recipe over. Okay? How amazing is that? So what I normally do is I normally wrap the potatoes in aluminum foil, okay? Put them in a hot oven and bake the potatoes until they're basically fork tender, okay? Then you wanna pull the skin off the potatoes They still hot 
and we're gonna drop the potatoes, right? The roasted potato, look at that, look how roasted they are, huh? We're gonna drop the potatoes right into a hot pot. This is the easiest recipe, by the way. If you need a copy of this recipe, it's on page 111 on Stories from My Grandmother's Kitchen Cookbook, which you can get by going to shopdariuscooks.com. Use the code GRAPE at checkout and you can save 40%. You can also save 20% on pound cakes. You go to carolinapoundcake.com Use the code THANKSGIVING2020 and save 20% on any cake order at carolinapoundcake.com. This is hot, Jesus. Woo! But I, I refuse to be defeated, okay? And these potatoes got to me last time because I couldn't get them. Okay? I couldn't get them because the dang on, um... You know, what you call it? Give me a spoon. Okay, now what the book say? Three potatoes, we need a stick of butter. Okay, three potatoes, one stick of butter. We need heavy cream, we need some sugar. Let's put some sugar in here, I got plenty of sugar. Of course I do. Okay, let me put a little more. Okay, perfect. And then let me grab some cream. And if you don't have cream, uh, half and half could work. You know, you want to keep this vegan. Almond milk could work. Just obviously you can't use, um, if you use almond milk, you can't use uh, real butter. So you got to use vegan butter but very carefully, okay? Like carefully. Honestly, when I was running restaurants, we used to serve these potatoes at Soul Crab in Chicago. We sold them at Soul Crab in Atlanta. And we also sold them at Greens and Gravy in uh, Atlanta. And people would be like, what is, what is in these potatoes? And I'm like, nothing. Okay, nothing, butter, sugar, cream. And the key is a pinch of salt. The salt balances with the sweet so well, okay? As a matter of fact, what does the note say on page 111? The key to this recipe is really wrapping the potatoes tightly in foil, letting them bake in the oven, they, this will develop their sweetness and they'll taste amazing. Be sure to set an oven safe dish under the potatoes as they bake so nothing leaks in the oven. And as you saw, I baked them in a cast iron skillet because they will leak, okay? When you roast them, the sugars will come out and they will leak. So you want to make sure that when you do this, you do it and you're careful, okay? That's it for the potatoes. That's simple, okay? I'm gonna put them on the stove on low so they can stay warm, but let me taste them, make sure they got enough stuff in them. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't like candy yams. I'm not a candy yam person. That's why I never made candy yams at um, Soul Craft. We never had candy yams at Greens and Gravy. Because I just don't like, I don't eat them. I don't eat them at all. But these potatoes, honey, I eps them up. Hold on, I'm just tidying myself up. stuff everywhere you know what I mean okay let us take a look at our pound cake all right 
So a bit of a recap, if you're just joining us, we've been cooking up a storm and we done made a lot. So we started with a frozen gremlin. It's supposed to be purple, grape, but I didn't have no grape Kool-Aid, so I used what I had, okay? I used what I had. Um, with the white grape Ciroc and a little bit of whiskey, the peach cobbler pound cake, so we made the uh, peaches with brown sugar, some whiskey, cinnamon, and uh, something else. Oh, lemon juice. Lemon juice. And we put that, ooh, child. We put that on the bottom of our cake. Okay? And then we made the cake batter and put the cake batter on top of the peaches, okay? So as you can see, let me go camera to camera so you can see what we have, okay? And of course, I'm gonna you know, flip this out momentarily. That way you have an opportunity to see the underside. Now, again, if you wanna make this pretty, please do, okay? If you want to, you know, when I say pretty, you know, shellac, you know, you could shellac the, um, the stuff, what you call it? The peaches. You could shellac them and make them look pretty. I'm not doing all that. <laughs> but you certainly could um, if you like to. I've got plenty of pound cake recipes everywhere, so... In the keto book, you have uh, Kentucky bourbon butter cake. We have a lemon blueberry loaf. We have uh, upside down cake, chocolate pound cake. Okay, we got chocolate pound cake in the everyday keto book, which you can get by going to shopdariuscooks.com. And we have the coffee shop lemon loaf which is very similar to a lemon pound cake. So literally, uh, and here we go, triple cream bake sale pound cake, all right? This is in Everyday Keto on page 199. In the new year, when we January hit, we'll do some stuff out of here, okay? But this is Everyday Keto, page 199. In stories from my grandmother's kitchen, the pound cake that you guys love is on page 193 and 194. So this is the buttermilk pound cake with the lemon lime glaze. Okay, this is here. And then there are, there's a pound cake recipe, it's in toward the front, somewhere in here on page, uh, child, I don't know. It's on page, it's in here. I, you know how I know it's in here? Because I wrote it. Here it goes, page 67. Okay? So you got pound cakes in all the books, including... You also now have pound cakes in uh, in the holiday book too, okay? Oh, you guys, ew! Our meatloaf is done. Look at this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What you said? I'm sorry. Chicken meatloaf. You don't like it. What what happened? Oh. 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 What is what do we have here? Oh my gosh, we have the the chicken meatloaf. This is my grandmother's chicken meatloaf recipe right here. Oh. Oh. Okay. Chicken meatloaf. By the way,
By the way, what 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 in the world? What is happening here? Did somebody say mac and cheese? Oh my god! Did we say mac and cheese? Oh god! Okay, this is the ultimate mac and cheese. It's in the book. All right, you can go grab the book by going to shopdariuscooks.com. Okay, I'm so excited. Hold on, y'all. I'm getting excited. Ooh, I done got excited. Hold on. All right. Devil stay busy, don't he? <laughs> don't he stay busy? Now we gotta season these collard greens, okay? The seasoning Okay, we on page uh let me see. Oh my god, look at these page numbers. Here we go, on page 70. Okay? On page 70. Now remember, I already cooked off the smoked turkey. I'm using a smoked turkey wing. And a smoked turkey thigh. Okay. The collard greens don't take that long. Twenty-five, thirty minutes on high pressure. About all you need. Mm -hmm. all you need. 25, 30 minutes on high pressure. See what I mean? Hold on. Look. The meat just... Ugh. Okay? It just falls apart so effortlessly that... And I, I'm... Hold on. I can't even talk. I got excited. Hold on. I like meat. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this, okay? I love a little piece of turkey in about every bite of my collard meat, okay? Let's season these, because we haven't seasoned these at all, okay? Chicken bouillon for flavor and salt content, okay? You know it don't be enough oil in them collard greens from that smoked turkey, so you need to add in some olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever you got. Non-salted, non-salted uh, Cajun seasoning, okay, non-salted, I'm going to stress, non-salted, okay, a pinch of red pepper flake, a 
garlic powder, onion powder, and I don't care what nobody tell you, you need a pinch of sugar, okay? I don't care what nobody tell you, you need you a pinch of sugar in your collard greens, okay? <clears throat> now stir that together. Listen, if I don't cook until Wednesday of this week, it's because I'm eating collard greens, okay? Look at these. Look at that. Do you see that? Honey, listen. Listen. Look at this. Look at the, the look at how much meat is in here. This is a meal all by itself. Give me that and some cornbread and some hot sauce and a nap, okay? But we have a little bit of a cake to tend to. Let me see if I can get it out in one piece. Okay. Let me see if I can get this cake out in one piece. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come as humbly as we know how, trusting that you are a cake-releasing God. Huh? Oh, yes, we believe, dear Heavenly Father, that with all these people watching, you're not going to allow this pound cake to get stuck inside the pan. Huh? I speak release right now in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Child, this thing is hot. He's a cake releasing God. Huh? He is a cake releasing God. I'm going to go camera to camera so you guys can see the cake, okay? I'm going to go camera. It's still warm, so it needs to cool, all right? But what is he? What's up, Loyla? Loida? I don't even know who you are, but hey, sis, with your blue check mark. Huh? Look at that. What is he? A cake releasing God? Huh? Now remember, you don't have to bake your own cake. You can get one by going to Carolina Pound Cakes, poundcake.com. Use the code uh, GRAPE, G R A P E, GRAPE, at checkout and save 40%. Any one, I use this one a lot, stories from my grandmother's kitchen or everyday keto or vegan but with soul, okay? You can grab these at dairy, uh, shopdariuscooks.com and use the code GRAPE at checkout and you can save 40%. Okay, let's see. What do we get into first? The macaroni and cheese. That what y'all said? I heard you. Don't worry about it. Ooh. 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 We'll get into the macaroni and cheese first with no eggs. We can do that. Okay. A little macaroni and cheese. Okay, why don't we cut a little sliver of our chicken meatloaf. Oh, oh, hold on, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot Jesus. Oh, I can't get it, oh, I can't get it. There you go, I got it. Oh, oh, I got it. Okay, there's our meatloaf. I got some um, 
a few pieces of roasted sweet potato. You know, I like this. Ooh. Fresh potatoes. And then let's get into some collard green. Ooh. With extra smoked turkey in there. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. All right. I want you to see this. Huh? I want you to see this. Collard greens. This is the uh, sweet potato, the meatloaf, and the macaroni and cheese. Okay? Okay, here you go. I'm going camera to camera so everybody can see it. Okay, sorry, YouTube. That was frozen for a minute. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Didn't know you were frozen. Okay. All right. Oh, there's also a cooking class. Thank you. I'm doing a, a private cooking class this weekend. Okay, the first one is on Saturday. Second one is on Sunday. You can go to um, Shop Darius Cooks and you can get a ticket for that. Okay, if you want a private Zoom cooking class, here you go. Okay, give me one second. Bow your head and say grace real fast, huh? Mm-hmm, grace. This is the meatloaf. Let me see. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why does this taste like this? Ah. Uh. Mm. I'm telling you, gravy is good, but the ketchup is the bomb. I'm telling you. I'm a ketchup boy. This is the bomb. Okay, whipped potatoes. And if you want, let me tell you, the, let me show you the trick. Amazon, people. Before you even ask me, Amazon. This is Maldon smoked sea salt okay this is smoked sea oh it's amazing okay you finish your potatoes with smoked sea salt amazon say it again amazon i'm gonna say it one more time amazon smoked sea salt mm, mm, mm. i'm telling you trial Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. Baby, why do these taste like this? I do not know. Mm, look at the macaroni and cheese. Hold on. The ultimate mac and cheese. It's really the only mac and cheese recipe you ever need. I'm telling you. Undercook the pasta, over salt the water, you will get it right every time. Every single time. It'll be amazing. Oh, that is delicious. Okay, and then our college greens with the smoked turkey. They hot, hold on, they hot. Come on. That smoked um turkey thigh. Baby, listen. It's where it is. Okay, listen, I gotta go. Alright. I've been on a long to know. And I gotta go for this item. So listen. We got about 10 minutes. 
If you want a copy of the book, shopdariuscooks.com. Use the code GRAPE at checkout. Save you 40%. All right? I love you. I'll catch up with y'all in a couple days, and we'll cook some more. Okay? Two things I want to tell you as I always do. Food is my life. Right? It's my food. Until next time, I got to wish you a happy cooking. From my heart to yours. Bye, everybody. Ha, 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 ha.